Asexual reproduction is unbelievably simple when you compare it to sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is, think about it, it's like one cell just growing big enough, gathering enough materials, and then it copies everything and then splits in two. Yeah, there's some processes in there, but holy crap, think about how it compares to sexual reproduction. Again, asexual is just growing, duplicating, splitting. Done. Baby made. Sexual reproduction. Holy crap, is there a lot to do with sexual reproduction. It is an extremely energy intense uh, process. Um, think about everything that has to go in for sexual reproduction to be successful. First of all, the, the development of a baby. Um, it's not just a, a matter of uh, producing the baby. The baby has to, has to mature, it has to grow, um, and uh, it has to develop its sexual organs. Uh, in fact, most organisms uh, kind of develop themselves around their sexual organs. Uh, they protect them uh, pretty closely. Um, after all, one of the main goals of life is to eventually reproduce. Um, at least, maybe not for all humans, but um, definitely when you consider the, the grand scheme of things in nature, most organisms' main goal is to eventually make a baby. So if reproduction is one of our main goals as, as any species on the planet, then we also need to take into consideration another one of the main things that we must have, and that's energy. Every single organism needs some form of energy. It is absolutely precious. If you don't reproduce today, you're still going to be alive tomorrow. If you don't get energy today, if you don't go find some form of food, you might not be alive tomorrow. Or you're at least at a significant disadvantage. If you starve one day, it's going to be much harder to find food the next day because you're going to be low on energy. So energy is such a, a key, important part of survival. So if we're going to sexually reproduce and it's going to require a tremendous amount of energy, let's talk about how in energy intensive sexual reproduction really is. Let's start with humans, something we're, we're comfortable with. Um, just producing the gametes. Think about males. Um, inside of uh, the male's testicles, uh, males produce on average about 85 million sperm per day 85 million cells and that's just in case there's a sexual event that's just in case the male happens to have sex on that day and then on top of that that's just so one of those sperm can make it to an egg 85 million just in case there's sex and then that's just so one can make it that is incredibly energy intensive. That requires a lot of your energy every single day. Females are no different, the, probably even more intense. Uh, like they produce an entire uterine lining um, every month. There's millions and millions and millions of cells go into reproducing this, this layer in which an egg might implant if it's fertilized. So. Uh, like that, that monthly cycling, uh, a female's period is incredibly energy intensive. They make so much inside of themselves just in case there's a sexual event that might fertilize an egg and that egg might implant inside of that uterine lining. There are so much, uh, there's so much energy that goes in to being hopeful that it actually implants and boy oh boy we haven't even talked about behavior yet man you've all started thinking about mates like you're you're at the age around 14 where um encounters with the other sex or encounters with a, a, a potential partner uh start creeping into your minds uh, many of you have already experienced heartbreak like that process of selecting a mate so not just the actual mating process but choosing a mate takes so much energy like the human behaviors that goes in to courtship the amount of time 
the amount of resources that, like that somebody will spend trying to kind of catch a potential mate's eye and get them thinking about them. Um, and then there's always the chance that uh, that chemistry doesn't work very well and then people go their separate ways and there's all the emotions that come with that. Holy crap is that, whew, that's a lot. And that is, again, just in hopes that in the end, one sperm finds that one egg and they manage to meet up and fertilize each other and then they implant inside of the human female, inside of the uterus. And then you have to grow the baby. You have to grow it inside of the, inside of the, the female. Um, man, nine, uh, nine months, nearly 10 months of, of being pregnant, of literally feeding this baby through your blood until, um, the baby's grown up big enough that it can come out and start challenging the world on its own, but not at first, not for the first, like, five, six, ten years, the baby has to be taken care of by the parents, uh, otherwise it doesn't survive. All of this, all of this, to make a baby, again... Think back to asexual reproduction. You got a bacteria. It gathers enough stuff. It makes a copy of everything. And then it pinches off and splits. There's no sexual organs involved. There's no... Um, there, there, there's nothing that involves any sort of behavior. No choosing a mate. Nothing. It's just... Baby. So different with sexual reproduction. So, how did we ever come to end up with such an energy-intensive uh, reproduction? Why? Why would that ever make sense? What do we possibly stand to gain from so much effort, so much of our precious energy going towards making this baby, this prized possession? Why would we spend so much energy on sexual reproduction when asexual reproduction seems so simple? Why don't humans asexually reproduce? Here it is, guys, going full circle. Right back to our very first topic. It's all about biodiversity. It's all about creating variety. When an organism asexually reproduces, it makes an exact clone. When that bacteria cell that asexually reproduces, when it duplicates everything inside of itself and pinches off, you have two exact same bacteria. There's a major disadvantage with that. What happens if something comes along that affects one of those bacteria? Imagine some sort of disease or a genetic malfunction in some way. The other one is sure to also be affected by the exact same thing. Not so much the case with sexually reproducing organisms. Where there's a gigantic amount of variety between each of the organisms, that provides certain organisms within the population different advantages than other organisms within the same species. Uh, for example, using the, the disease example again, imagine there's a disease, and there's been many diseases in, in human history that have been devastating that have just ripped through a population. The bubonic plague, black plague, um, Spanish flu, uh, man, millions of people dropping in, in matters of days, months, uh, a few short years, finding entire cities and villages all dead. Um, some, some diseases are just insane. Now imagine there's a small subsect of human beings that have a resistance to that disease because it's just naturally part of their genetics. When that disease comes to town, if they survive and everybody else is dead, they're suddenly at an extremely large advantage. Every resource in the area is suddenly theirs. With humans, it's a little different because we have cities and villages, but imagine something like a uh, deer population. If they were really concerned, if food was getting rather scarce, and then suddenly all the deer died except for some of the resistant ones, they get all the food, they get all the water, they get all the, the, the space to live. Um, like having variety within a population gives different groups of that population advantages. That 
is a very key thing. That is what uh, sexual reproduction is all about, is producing that huge amount of variety. And how sexual reproduction does it is all in that fertilization. Remember, mother, father both produce gametes. Male sex cell is the sperm. Female sex cell is the egg. Both carry half their chromosomes. So when they combine together, they are not the same as the parent. The mother is different from the father. And when they come together and make a baby, they're making something that's a combination of the two of them. It's not exact clones, like asexual reproduction. So you end up with this, this really obviously key advantage of variation, but it comes at a very, very heavy cost. Sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Let's do a little comparison in a nice little chart here so you can uh, look at them side by side. Sexual reproduction, it's very energy intensive. Like I said, um, from everything uh, of preparing the gametes to the, the actual sexual event, to finding a partner, to growing the baby, and then developing the baby after it's been born, man, there's so much that goes involved. With asexual reproduction, there's very little that's, in, that's involved comparatively. There, there is a, a, a a certain amount of energy required to asexually reproduce, uh, like they do have to duplicate everything inside of the cell, so that that is uh, a pretty intense amount for a short period of time, but that is nowhere near the amount of uh, total energy needed to be invested in reproduction. Asexual reproduction is quite a bit more energy efficient. Uh, sexual reproduction is pretty slow. Um, think about how long it takes to make a, a baby. Um, everything from choosing a, a mate to eventually finding the correct mate and then the actual mating, growing the baby, developing the baby, oh man, years, years uh, of time is invested in sexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, man, some cells can reproduce every two minutes. Bam, baby. In the, the time that I've been talking in this video, uh, bacteria could have split itself six times. Um, that's, that's insane. That's nowhere near uh, in, in comparison. So you get huge populations really quickly. So with sexual reproduction, it requires some specialized sexes. So we need to have males and females. Both of them need specialized organs to perform their, their, their job. Um, Choosing mate is difficult, and yeah, you need to have two different sexes. Uh, there's no specialized organs required at all for asexual reproduction. All you need is a parent, and that parent needs to have uh, the ability to duplicate everything inside of itself. Um, what you get out of sexual reproduction is so important, though. This variation allows humans to do so many things. Um, it allows any animal that sexually produces to uh, have some really huge advantages. Um, but it, it comes at a really great cost, um, the time required and the energy required uh, and the specialization required in order to, to create that variety. Obviously that variety must be a really important thing, otherwise sexual reproduction wouldn't exist. It wouldn't be a thing. If, if all of this energy put in were to gain something small. So asexual reproduction, it produces almost no variation. In fact, most times they're exact clones. The only way that there's going to be some variation if there's a mutation along the way. Um, and those, uh, those happen, but um, for the most part, um, those organisms, all of those bacteria, all of those fungus, whatever whatever is asexually reproducing, um, they're all going to be almost identical clones as each other. Um, so huge disadvantage here, if a parent has a genetic disease, so will all of its offspring. Um, so sexual reproduction versus asexual reproduction, they, uh, they both have their advantages. Um, asexual reproduction, key advantage is they can reproduce really quickly for low amounts of energy. With the key advantage for sexual reproduction is that it creates lots of variety. So, sexual, asexual reproduction, advantages and disadvantages for both of them in different circumstances. Um, that's all for today. Thanks for watching.
till next time.